Number 13. A car's bumper is designed to withstand a 4 km per hour, which is a 1.1 meter per second, collision with an immovable object without damage to the body of the car. The bumper cushions the shock by absorbing the force over a distance. Calculate the magnitude of the average force on the bumper that collapses 0.2 meters while bringing a 900 kilogram car to rest from an initial speed of 1.1 meters per second. All right. So here's our two uh, scenarios. Here's the initial scenario. Mass of the car is 900. Initial velocity of the car is 1.1 meters per second, right? And it's moving, I'm assuming, to the right. Here's the final state, right? It hits a movable object. Uh, the final velocity then of the car is zero. Um, still the same mass. But if you notice here, the bumper has changed in size. And how much has it changed? Well, it told us, uh, changed in size by 0.2 meters. All right? So our job is to calculate the um, average force on the bumper. All right, so why don't we first start with this? So um, let's highlight this equation over here on the right-hand side first, okay? Now this is right one of the uh, equations that deals with force, all right, and relates it to work and energy. Now in the prior question, number 12, I chose to solve a problem like this using a different method, using more of a kinematic uh, method which would be totally acceptable to do in this problem too. This one I'm going to do from an energy perspective. I just like to give you different perspectives. You can solve these things in a whole bunch of ways. In any case, so let's be very specific with what we're talking about in this formula. Okay, so instead of thinking about this as, hey, the work equals the force times the distance multiplied by the cosine of the angle, be more specific when you write out this equation, meaning say it in your head a little more specifically. So what are we trying to find? We're trying to find the average force on a bumper. Okay, so the force here, right? We want to find the average force done on the bumper performed by the car, right? Because the car is exerting the force on the bumper. Then we need to know the distance the bumper changes, okay? And the cosine of the angle between the force, right, on the bumper due to the car and the direction uh, and compare it right to the direction of the distance that the bumper changed. All right, that's what the theta represents. Last but not least, it's the work, right? So it's the work done on the bumper by the car. All right, so keep these subscripts in mind, and this will help us in terms of signs in a little bit. Now, I want to find force, okay? I need to know all the other variables. Well, I think the distance, right, the distance or the displacement the bumper change should be pretty easy. It's 0.2. The sign might not be easy, but we'll talk about that in a second. So we got that. And the angle, too, we haven't really gotten to yet. I'll draw a picture in a second. But why don't we focus on the work? So how can we find the work? Well, fortunately, right, we do have another equation here on the right-hand side. It says that the change in kinetic energy is equal, is equal to the work. All right. So... Interesting. Let's detail that on the left-hand side over here. All right. So the change in kinetic energy, right? So this is basically the kinetic energy uh, final minus the kinetic energy initial. Okay. That's what the change in kinetic energy will be. So why don't we um, change in kinetic energy? So why don't we just elaborate on this equation a little bit? So change in kinetic energy would be equal to one half mv squared and that's the final velocity, minus one-half mvi squared, right? because that's the initial. Now notice these two terms have the same two factors, one-half m. So I can pull that out, right, and say that the change in kinetic energy would be equal to one-half m multiplied now by the final velocity squared minus the initial velocity squared, okay? And then even further condensing that, I can then write a formula like this, so this would be one half m times the change in velocity squared. All right, so this could be a very condensed version. Okay, so you can always use this one if you need. Um, now, okay. So actually, I'll just leave a little box around it. All right, but what I'm going to do here in terms of my math, I'm going to be using this equation right here. So let's start plugging in some values that we know. Okay, now remember, this is the change in kinetic energy of what? Well, what, what's moving in the problem? Well, the object that's moving is the car, right? That's the object that's moving, so that's what we're finding the change in kinetic energy of. So let's think about this. So the change in kinetic energy, 
right, will be equal to one half times the mass multi multiplied by the final velocity, which was zero squared, minus the initial velocity of 1.1 squared. So now all we have to do is plug this into the calculator, but please be very careful here. Do not plug this into the calculator. Do not put your parentheses around this, okay? Because then you're gonna wind up summing the two values in uh, those brackets, all right? It's one half of the initial velocity here. All right, so put your parentheses around that. Otherwise the signs are not gonna work out. And you'll understand why in a second that that's important. So 0.5, well, oh, I didn't put in the mass, right? Sorry. The mass of the vehicle was 900, right? So let's just plug that in. Great, this is zero squared minus 1.1 squared. Okay, so 0.5 times 900 times now, right? 1.1, uh, it's really negative. Okay, whoops, error on the calculator. All right, so the answer comes out to be negative 545. So negative 545, and that's in terms of joules. Now this result should make sense. Think about this. We're talking about the car here, so let me write down the subscript of the car. Okay, this is the car. So the change in kinetic energy of the car is negative 545 joules. Remember, it had some velocity initially, and then it has now no velocity. So the kinetic energy, which is the measure of, which is right energy of motion, changed in a negative fashion. It went from something to nothing. So the value should be negative. But now here's the thing. Are you gonna plug this exact value into this equation now? Because remember, the formula over here says, right here, says that the change in kinetic energy is equal to the work. But, which is true, but this equation, which is given in the book, I think should be detailed a little more in terms of subscripts. Right, so uh, this work is the work done on the bumper by the car, right? And this is specifically the work or the energy just on the car, right? This is the, and this is the change in energy of the car. So if I were to think about it, I could basically come up with this equation. Very simple, right? The work, I'll say the work, oops, the work done on the bumper, right? by the car should be equal to the work, the negative, right, of the work, or I should say the negative kinetic energy. Negative change, let me do that. Negative change in kinetic energy of the car. This would be more appropriate, okay? Because the car lost energy, where'd it go? Can't just disappear, right? Conservation of energy, it has to go somewhere. So where did that energy go? If the car lost that energy, where'd it go? It went into the bumper, right? So the bumper gained the energy, all right? So that's why I can say, state this mathematical relationship, all right? That they should be equal in magnitude, but opposite in sign, all right? So the work done on the bumper by the car should be a positive 545. All right, so that's 545. Actually, let me put it in black. So that's positive 545. Okay, now let's deal, well, we still don't know the force, right? The force on the bumper by the car should be then multiplied by the change in distance or change in displacement of the bumper. Well, now be careful here, right? This is the initial size of the bumper, and this is the final size. And we know it changes by 0.2, but in what direction does it change, right? So let me draw these out. So here's the initial state. Let me draw a little better. Here's the initial state. Assume that this thing is 0.5 meters in length, okay? I'll write a little i here. Here's the final state now. It looks like this, right? Smaller, let's assume that's 0.3, okay? So how much did the bumper change by? Well, it changed by 0.2, right? And that's what it told us, it changed by 0.2 meters. But in what direction? Well, if it started out here and it ended over here, you can see that the change in direction is actually this way by 0.2, right, meters. So remember, if I have a vector going to the left, what's the sign of it? It's negative, right? 
So therefore, this value in here should be a negative 2.00. Oh, excuse me, negative 0 0.200. Cool so far? Okay, now, last but not least, the cosine then, the cosine of then the angle between the force on the bumper by the car and the vector of the displacement. So realize that the displacement is to the left. And what's the force done on the bumper by the car? Well, let's think about it. Which way is the car moving? The car is moving to the right, correct? So the car is applying some force to the right-hand side, right? So this car right here is applying a force to the right. Now, the wall then is supplying the force to the left, right? But what I'm concerned with is the force on the bumper by the car, not by the wall. So therefore, the angle between this vector pointing to the right, okay, which is here on my coordinate system, and then this vector pointing to the left, which I'll plug that in right here. I'll do it in black so you can see it a little better. All right, is how many degrees apart? Well, that's 180. So let's plug in the 180. And now we'll be able to calculate this value correctly with the appropriate sign. And let's see if it makes sense. So basically, uh, let's just divide the side. So we'll, what we'll do is we'll take, I mean, you don't even need the calculator for this, but negative 0.2 times cosine of 180 should be then a positive 0.2. So divide both sides by 0.2. So the force on the bumper by the car will be equal to 545 divided by 0.2. So 2.73, right? 2.73 times 10 to the third times 10 to the third Newtons, and it's positive. Now, does that make sense? Well, look at how I just described the force. The force on the car, excuse me, the force on the bumper by the car is to the right. So that should make sense, all right? So there you have it, guys, all right? So I think the hardest part, it's not necessarily, you know, plugging in the numbers, we can see, okay, we got work, we got the distance, great, I can just plug it in, but what's the sign? And the sign can be important, right? Because the sign can tell you, uh, the signs tell you direction, all right? So any case, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe, and I look forward to helping you with the next question. Take care.